At the edge of the crowd, he heard a youthful voice call, Mr. Dark, could I talk to you a minute, Mr. Dark? He didn't look around. Talk to me tomorrow. I'd like to talk to you now. Boy, can't you see? Dark turned half angrily, looking for whomever had spoken. He saw a man a little past twenty, fresh-eyed, smooth-faced, but sun-browned, wearing a floppy farmer hat and a loose-fitting homespun shirt, probably made for somebody else. Sharply, Dark said, I got a right smart on my mind right now, Button. I don't feel like talking to nobody. Hunt me up another time. I come a long ways. You shouldn't have. Right now I just want me a good stiff drink. By myself. The young man went silent, but as Dark proceeded away from the courthouse toward the gin mills on Garrison Avenue, he sensed the lad was following him. Dark turned abruptly. Are you kin of Barney Tankard? No, sir. Kin of somebody else I brought in for the judge? No, sir. Then what's your grudge? I got no grudge, sir. If it ain't a grudge, then I wish you'd leave me the hell alone. Dark resumed his walk, pushing on through the crowd. Acquaintances hailed him, but he passed them by. He fixed his gaze stonily on a certain saloon and tried to see nothing else. But his eye was caught by a heavy freight wagon standing in the street and a big man checking the trace chains. Dark stiffened at sight of him, and he rubbed a rough hand across his face. The big man raised up. His mouth smiled, but his eyes were hard. Howdy, Sam Dark. Good hanging. Dark's fists knotted. I don't expect Barney Tankard enjoyed it much. You don't need to look at me that away. I didn't even know the boy. But you got his money in your pocket, Harvey Oates and I expect now you're getting ready to go back across into the territory and peddle some more of the same bad whiskey to other Indian boys who got no tolerance for it. Harvey Oates kept his sham of a smile. You want to look at my wagon? You've done it before, and you've never yet found a drop of whiskey. Someday I will. I'll drag you to the judge, Harvey. You'll never find what ain't there. I'm just an honest freighter, that's all. I take the necessities of life to the poor folks out yonder in the wilderness that can't come and fetch it for themselves. He dropped the smile. You're a sad case, Sam Dark. You've got to take in your job too personal. That's a dangerous thing. You're just supposed to bring them in. You're not supposed to worry about them. Most of them I don't worry about, Harvey. And when I bring you in, I'll get a good night's sleep. Dark turned away from Harvey Oates and elbowed through the swinging door of the saloon. The mustachioed bartender looked at him questioningly. Dark said, I'm off duty, John. You wouldn't be drinking if you wasn't, Sam. You done your duty. I heard them doors drop. First drink's on me. I reckon you got it coming. Sam Dark had no dependence upon whiskey. He could go without it for weeks at a time and never miss it. Over in the territory, it was forbidden. But he respected whiskey's preventive and curative powers when used at the proper time and place. This was the time. He downed the glass, coughed, then slammed a coin on the bar. So you don't lose money on me, John. Fill her again. He took the glass, careful not to spill anything, and carried it to a small table to nurse it with time and care. He heard the bartender ask somebody, What's for you, young fellow? The reply was in the same voice he had heard at the edge of the crowd. Nothing, thanks. Mind if I just set myself down here to wait? Dark scowled and flung a question halfway across the room. What you waiting for, Button? For you, Mr. Dark. For you to get in the notion to talk to me. That'll be a while, Dark thought to himself looking away but not putting the thought into words. He sipped the whiskey, letting it burn his tongue, his throat, wishing it could also burn his brain and erase that image of those black eyes accusing him from the gallows. Times like this he wished he was still following a plow, his eyes looking past the brown rump of a stout Missouri mule. 
Times there was no price they could pay a man on a job like this that would be half enough. They paid little enough as it was. He took a long time with the glass of whiskey, and when it was gone, he filled it again. The tension had dulled a little. The black eyes that stared at him were blurred some and didn't cut quite so deep. The farm boy still sat at a table across the room, patiently waiting. Why don't he get tired and leave? Dark asked himself irritably. But something sensed rather than seen told him the boy would wait there as long as Dark did. Dark waved him over. All right, Button, you make as much noise sitting there quiet as you'd make hollering in my ear. Come on and get it said. <laughs>